So I always tell people that when you start getting into this, um, some of the greatest memories that you're going to have is when you start traveling the world, visiting different cultures, different countries, approaching dating girls um, in different environments. And uh, in today's video, I want to uh, recount the story, the time that for the first time in my life, when I hooked up with two girls in one night and... Uh, Basically, at the time, you know, it was a big thing for me. I didn't think it was possible or I mean, I knew, you know, people were doing it, but I didn't think that I was ever going to do it. Um, but it happened in my first time going to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil um, years ago. This was my second uh, trip abroad that I went to after Belgrade, Serbia. And, you know, First time going to Brazil was actually my first time in South America in general. So it's just a really different vibe and different culture than America, than Europe. And uh, it was in December, so it was their summer when it was uh, winter for me back home. And overall, it was a good week. Um, dating some girls, seeing the city, having some fun. And obviously, in the meantime, you know, I was still continuing with my approaching because it was still fairly new to me had a lot of momentum so it was kind of fun just to kind of start approaching dating girls from uh, you know latina girls uh south american um in uh in rio de janeiro brazil so i went there um for about a week and then i remember towards the end of the week um I approached this one Brazilian girl in which saw her on the um, on the boardwalk. So there's that famous boardwalk near the Rio Beach. You have Copacabana, then it goes to Empinela, then it goes to Leblon, and there's like that long boardwalk. And then right by there is the beach with all like the restaurants by there. And I remember um, I was with Sam from Fluid Social. Uh, I think we were having a drink. Uh, we were chilling at one of the restaurants, and I saw this girl walk by, and I was like, oh, let me go say hi um, during the day. So I approached her. <laughs> Initially, she got a little bit scared. Obviously, um, you know, it is Brazil. Uh, Rio is a pretty dangerous city. Uh, people are always kind of wary, especially when strangers come up to each other. Um, but obviously, fairly quickly, um, she knew that I just wanted to say hi. Uh, her English turned out to be quite good. And um, she actually invited me. She was actually meeting with some friends at a bar down the, a little bit down the road. So when I got her number, she actually invited uh, myself and Sam. So I remember we went over to her like 30 minutes later. She was, t she was with two friends. He was talking with the friends. I was talking with her. So I was kind of already, you know, building in a little bit of rapport with her. Um, getting to know each other. Uh, nothing was going to happen right then and there because they said that they had plans. Um, she had mentioned that after that day, she had to go back to her family in another city, but she was going to come back to Rio. And then when she came back, we would uh, connect. So, you know, I got the number. Um, again, cool girl. And didn't really think too much of it. And um, so that was the first girl get back to that a little bit later um either that night or the next night i remember sam and i again we were out and uh we went to this bar and we were just kind of standing outside some bar talking to some people that we knew and then he started talking to a group of girls and then i remember there was one that i particularly liked um and i went over and i started talking to her and pretty soon they're all from argentina Visit, visiting from Argentina and that was kind of like my first glimpse into Argentinian girls and kind of just how receptive how fun they are and again this girl was quite attractive um, you know we were just talking and we you know we try to see what they're doing later that night but I think they said they were out all day or whatever they're tired but we still had a few drinks with them and, you know, I was sitting next to the girl. I could tell she was attracted to me just by her body language, um, the way that she was talking. So, again, I exchanged numbers with her. And, you know, my plan was to see if she would be able to come out before I left. Because I remember after that day, um, it was my uh, second to final night, I believe. So, the next day comes around. 
and I believe it was actually my final night. Yeah, because there was a reason why I texted everybody at once to see who I can get out. So that girl that I mentioned that, you know, I met before, she had to go back to her family, but she was coming back to Rio. She was coming back later that day. So I remember that, um, you know, I texted her and we set up something tentatively later that evening, 7, 8 p.m. or whatever. And then I texted the Argentinian one, the one that I just got the night before, because I was actually a little bit more attracted to her. I was like, hey, you know, so and so. So we started talking back and forth. And I said, hey, you know, keep your night open. Let's meet up later. She's like, yeah, for sure. Definitely. So the Brazilian one, um, she came back. um, She texted me saying, are we still game on? I'm like, yeah, for sure. So we met her. We met at one of the beach bars around eight o'clock. We had a few drinks, went back to my place. We started making out. But then I remember saying that she was like, oh, this is too fast. She's like, I want to go out and drink some more. You know, at the time I was still, you know, fairly still learning this stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. So we went back um, out of my uh, Airbnb, which was a very good location right by the beach. And then we went down, you know, we walked around around that area. We found like a cool bar with a lot of people. And again, we had some drinks, um, just having a good time. And then eventually I did bring her back to my place again. And that's where we hooked up. And uh, at the time, I would have been like happy, you know, because I'm mean, yeah, I got the, you know, hooked up with the girl, my night's good. But I remember, uh, for some whatever reason, this girl then started to um, get it not, not, not like annoying, but she started to like, you know, just say some, I forgot what she said specifically, but she kind of like just annoyed me. And I remember I just wanted to go back out because I was still energized for whatever reason. So I remember while she was kind of like, you know, laying in bed, <laughs> I took my phone and I texted the Argentinian one. I'm like, hey, are we, you know, where are you at? Uh, let's grab a drink. And then she right away sent me her location, which was just up the road um, at a beach bar. Um, and this was, I think, around 10, 11 o'clock at night now. So now I'm thinking I have to, you know, get rid of this other girl, you know, in a nice way, in a polite manner, but at the same time change up. So I remember I told her, I'm like, hey, I have to go to bed. You know, then she was like, oh, are you kicking me out? Blah, blah, blah. And again, I was just trying to be nice about it um, and, you know, not be rude. She eventually got the point. I just said, look, I, you know, I have an early flight the next day. So I remember I walked her down and in, in this Airbnb, it's an apartment complex, but I found on Airbnb, there's a host man. So, you know, he saw me walk this girl. I mean, he saw us, you know, come in originally. And then now he's seen me take her out outside. And I think she called a cab. So I went back. I quickly took a shower, <laughs> dressed up again, went back out. Um, I called an Uber and I met up with the Argentinians because she was still with her two friends. So it was just myself and then the three Argentinians, you know, they're all dancing, drinking, you know, I got another drink, you know, I just found a table. Then she eventually pulled me to start dancing. You know, I was dancing with her, you know, it was all a good time. This bar was like, the ratio was like 80% women, 20% guys. And I was the only foreigner. And, but it was a good time. There was a mix of Colombians, Argentinians, Brazilians. Um, It was really fun. I was like the awkward white gringo, like trying to dance. Uh, My dancing skills are a little bit better now, but at the time they were pretty bad. It was just a classic. I have like one drink in my hand and then um, not not sure what to do with my other hand, sometimes in my pocket or, you know, put it in the air. So <laughs> it was quite awkward, but oh, well, we're all there to have fun. And then eventually we all went to the um, right by behind the bar. We went to the beach and they had like a little fire. So we're all just kind of sitting around there. Um, having a, having some drinks people you know asking about me because I was the only for, like the only gringo um the only one who really spoke English fluently but I was sitting next to the girl and I remember eventually you know it was past midnight um there's something that we we always say you have to like kind of pull the trigger you know kind of just you know make the move or else the night can just potentially linger so I remember I um um kind of like not whispered but I kind of you know went up close by her ear I'm like hey um come back to my place let's grab another drink uh soon and she looks at me she's like oh just give me a minute and then I remember she was talking with her friends because remember she was with her two Argentinian friends 
And, you know, I just played it nonchalantly, talking to the others. And then I remember she came back to me. She's like, yeah, sure, I'll come back with you. Um, I just need to say goodbye to my friends. I'm like, okay, cool. And then uh, a few minutes later, you know, everyone was starting to head out because I think at this point it was like 1230, close to one. I think the bar was closing up. You know, we said goodbye to our friends. Um, at this point, I was starting to get a little bit tipsy now because, you know, I was started drinking at eight o'clock, um, hooked up and then, you know, came back out, drank again. So it was a combination of being a little bit tipsy and the tiredness started to come in. But I was still pretty energized because this girl was fairly attractive and this was going to be my first uh, Argentinian girl. So I was uh, quite excited. So I remember, you know, we called a taxi and, uh, you know, we, you know, got in the taxi. Uh, there was a little bit of silence in the cab, but I tried to kind of, you know, talk, engage, because this is now what I tell students is that anytime you're walking a girl back or you're in a cab, you know, you're in a cab ride back, make sure that there's no awkward silence. Um, not to say that just start saying random things, but just keep the conversation going um, you know, laughing, joking, having a good time, because usually, like, if there's some awkward silence, there, that's when potentially where, you know, the girl may change her mind, or maybe the energy might kind of fall off a little bit. But we kept it engaging. I told the driver, put some good music on, because it was only like a five minute uh, drive down the road to the apartment or Airbnb that I was staying at. So what was funny is when we got there, <laughs> that same doorman now saw me bring back a second girl. And he's thinking in his head, like, what the hell is this guy up to? What's this gringo up to? But I just, again, nonchalantly, I'm like, hey, how are you doing? Just took her back before, you know, potentially he could have said something like, oh, this guy is bringing, you know, this is the second girl, blah, blah, blah. None of that happened. So I brought her back, um, came to my room. We started playing some music. You know, I had uh, a few drinks. You know, we started to have fun, escalate. And again, this was... The second girl in a matter of like three hours that I hooked up. And this was the first time in my life that I managed to hook up with two girls in one night. And um, it was my first Argentinian. And I just remember thinking that this is just crazy. Like uh, I never thought that this was going to happen. And I remember I was like so happy when I went to bed. <laughs> because when I dropped her back off. Actually no she... Um, she slept a little bit because she had an early bus the next morning. So I remember at 5 a.m. she woke me up. Um, so she did spend the night or she did sleep a little bit after we hooked up. And I remember when I walked her back down, that same doorman was there. <laughs> so when, you know, when she left, I came back and, you know, we started kind of cracking up a little bit. He was a cool guy. But I remember, you know, when I went back to my room, I was kind of lying in my bed. I'm like, wow, this is this was amazing. This was, you know. These are the type of stories of like what can happen when you just put yourself out there and when you travel. And I remember like, you know, the next day I was still on a little bit of a high and I was thinking that there's no way that I just did this. Now it's not a big deal, but at the time, again, like anytime you do something for the first time, it's, um, you know, it's amazing. And it's like some of the greatest memories that you'll ever uh, think about and reflect back, reflect back on. And I always remember that um, this was a big thing for me because at that time, you know, hooking up with girls wasn't anything new. I just, just wanted to challenge myself. And uh, yeah, I managed to do this for the first time and it still sticks to me. And it's one of the best memories I have in regarding to doing this stuff. Um, because again, it was kind of like the day before, um, you know, I didn't know them. And then it just so happened throughout the day, just being social, getting a few numbers. And not the day before, because the Brazilian I met a few days before because she had to go back to her parents. So in a matter of like two, three days before, I didn't know any of them. And then fast forward just a couple of days, two, three days later, this happens from like, you never know what can happen. As long as you just keep putting yourself out there, you are going to get opportunities like this. Um, so yeah, guys, this was the story of the first time I hooked up with two girls in the same night happened in the lovely city of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And I hope you found it enjoyable. And don't worry, I have plenty more stories like this coming. 
Um, as you see, this is a series of like personal stories, personal dating stories, funny, funny things that happened, crazy things that happened because I pretty much experienced it all. Um, if not, I would like to see what else I haven't experienced. But when you get into this, you pretty much experience and see it all. Um, so guys, with that, I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a like, um, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. And once again, uh, thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.